Previously on The Bill. We found a body of a young man in a disused house. It might be your son. Marry me. I need some more time, is that okay? I've been taking steroids. And you are no longer fit for the tournament. You can't blame yourself for all of Stevie's problems. No, it's my fault. Sierra Oscar from 275, we're at Tilsey Gardens now. We have the vehicle and the mail. Over. Oh, on a Christmas bender, what do you reckon? A hefty fine in a disc wall for being drunk in charge. I hope the office party was worth it. Come on, mate, wakey wakey. Shall I break it? Well, let's try something other than brute force first, shall we? Well, I hope you've got a better idea, because we can... And Rick Harris. Reg and I found the remains of his son yesterday on the Auburn estate. Been missing for 18 months, drugs overdose. Mr. Harris! What's he doing here? Grieving, I suppose. Mr. Harris! Can we open up, please? What do you want? Are you all right, sir? Leave me alone. I'm afraid we can't do that, sir, considering the state you're in. We're only trying to help. I've had enough police help to last me a lifetime. Where were you and my son was being fed the drugs that killed him? Where were you then, eh? Leave me alone. I'm afraid we can't do that, sir. What the hell do you think you're doing? I'm trying to save you from doing something stupid. You're no fit state to drive anywhere. Come on, out of the car, please, sir. Damn. Thanks. That's it. Come on, sir. Dan, can you get on the blower, see if D.I. Manson's about? He's going to want to know about this. Mr. Harris, I'm afraid you've given me no choice. I'm arresting you on suspicion of attempting to drive whilst having had too much to drink. You've been there all night? Not sure, but it did look like you've been there a while. There's an empty bottle of whiskey in the back and the car reeks of it. Blood alcohol reading within acceptable limits. Yeah, right. That's what we thought. He must have spilt more than he drank. Oh, slapped some of it off. Maybe he drove to the park and then cracked open the whiskey. The question is, is he a danger to himself and the public? Let's get old of Sergeant Doug Wright from Barton Street. He was Rick's FLO when his son went missing. I'll call James Tennant. He might be able to help. Yes, Gov. Can we get you anything, Rick? A glass of water? And let me get out of here. Look, I understand that things are very difficult for you. You don't right? understand, OK? You don't understand a thing. My son is dead. And I've wasted 18 months of my life for nothing. Mr. Harris, we just need to know that you're OK. We need to know that you're not a danger to yourself or to the public. I'm not a danger to the public. What are you doing in the park this morning? Watching the world go by. Is that a crime these days? Driving there whilst loaded with whiskey is. But it's the season to be jolly. I used to take Stevie there a long time ago. Before I left his mother. I left him. I don't know why I ended up there. I thought it might remind me of better times. It didn't. I didn't open the whiskey until I got there. I thought that would help. It didn't. I just sat there, I watched. The parents with the kids, happy little families. No crime's been committed here, officers. Thank you for the concern, but there's nothing you can do for me. You know, you don't have to be on your own through this. Do you have children, Detective? Mm hmm Yeah, I got a little boy. His name's Jake. He's seven. So you've had a happy Christmas, then? No, not really. He's in Spain. With his mum. Do you think you've done the best for him? Not as much as I'd like. And there, but for the grace of God. Is this way. Thanks for coming. What's going on? Victimisation. Get up. Give someone a bit of power. Look what happens. You broke into the school, Kyle. You're not meant to be here out of term time. And look what I found. 
I was catching up on some paperwork and heard some noises in one of the classrooms. He was in there writing expletives on the blackboard. I hate calling in the police on a pupil, but I've tried so hard with this one. I'm at the end of my tether. Where'd you get this knife, Carl? Kyle? I found it in one of the classrooms. That's a lie. He had it on him. He broke into the school with a knife and I want something done about it. He's accusing me of something I didn't do. Found that knife in one of the classrooms. Just Mr. Jessup I got there. It's his school. What were you doing here in the first place, Carl? Borrowing a book. <laughs> now I've heard everything. So I was. Can't punish me for wanting to read. So well coming today. Eh? What about the knife? He brought that in with him. It's rubbish that he found it. It's the truth. You can't call me a liar. See what I mean? Being bullied by me, a teacher. You should charge him for wasting police time. Right. Well, let's see if you're quite so lucky down the station, shall we? You what? I ain't done nothing. What's your full name? Carl oh, Henderson. Henderson. Are the lottery winners? Yep. Yeah. We're minted. That's what I reckon his problem is. Some people have the green-eyed monsters. That's what Mum says. Is it? Let's see what else she's got to say. Shall we? We'll take him down to the car. Sarge, come on you. Nice one, Grandad. Hope you're pleased with yourself. Come on. Uniform, picked him up this morning. Looks like he spent the night in his car drinking. Well, he certainly didn't want me around. Right? Yeah, he did what he could. He was always the one that was the support group, telling us to keep going to get on with our lives. Mm. Didn't do him a lot of good yesterday, did it? No. We keep telling ourselves we want to know what's happened with our kids. And... Even if it means... Anyway, I can't imagine what he's going through right now, and I hope I never have to. Go. This is Mr. Harris's stuff. Right. Even though he's had a negative blood alcohol reading, I'm not sure it's a good idea that he drives. Do you want me to get a cab with him, take him home? Yeah, that's a good idea, James. See if you can stay with him for a while, talk him into getting some help. I don't think he should be on his own right now. All right. Thanks. You don't think he'd harm himself? I don't know what to think, Roger. Grief does strange things to people. Thanks again for coming. I'm limited what I can do with him without getting myself sued. Well, let me give him a talking to. Hopefully taking him down the station or give him a jolt. I wouldn't bet on it. I know this isn't really the right time, but... Do you have an answer for me yet? Rod, I said I needed some time. I know. I, I didn't mean to pressure you. Well, don't then. I mean, marriage is a big commitment. I never thought I'd even consider it again. But you are considering it. Yes, of course I am. I haven't said no, have I? But you haven't said yes, either. I'll see you later, all right? That's it. In your own time, love. You just watch it, sunshine. Mrs. Henderson, Carl's in here. What do you think you're playing at? I had to leave the hairdressers for this. It's not my fault, Mum. That Jessup. I told you he's got it in for me. Picks me every day at school. Now he's got me down the nick. Just seen his face. It's like the best Christmas present you ever had. I'm sure that's not true. He's mentioned this, Jessup, before. I think he's got some problem with Kyle. What are you doing down the school, anyway? I normally have to give you money to go near the place. He said he was there to borrow a book. What do you think we all are? Stupid? It's true, Mum. And what about this knife, eh? I found it. At the school. I've never seen it before. My son doesn't carry knives. If he says he found it, he's found it. What, the school? See, we don't think that's very likely, Mrs Henderson. He may not be little boy blue, but my Kyle does not carry knives on him. I'm telling you, I know my son. So, what are you going to do with him? If you can guarantee that you will take him home and keep him under control, then we're prepared to overlook it this time. And the headmaster has decided to take no further action on the condition that this never happens again. I can't guarantee to control any of my kids, but I'll try my best. Uh, this is serious, Mrs Henderson. I'll control him. It's Jessup that needs controlling. And it's Mr Jessup to you. He's your headmaster. Whatever. I have to earn respect. You don't get none of me. You kids will do me in one day. Come on. Sorry. Excuse me, you have to help me. It's my son. You have to find him. Okay, uh, Mrs. Mitchell. Carol Mitchell. All right, Carol. Well, do you want to tell me what happened? 
It's my son, Greg. I'd, uh, I'd taken him to the kids' clinic at the shopping center, and uh, we had a row, and he stormed off. And then uh, by the time I came out of the surgery, he, he was gone. I mean, it was like he'd vanished into thin air. How old is Greg? He's uh, just turned 11. And is this normal behavior, Mrs. Mitchell? I mean, does he tend to run off after a row? Oh, we, we don't argue that much. Well, at least we haven't before. Could he be at a friend's house? You know, someone he hangs around with? Oh, Greg doesn't really have very many friends. He's, he's a bit of a shy type, you know. Pretty much just the two of us. Do you mind if I keep this? And I'll send some officers down to the shopping centre so I can have a look around. Oh, of course. Maybe I'm overreacting, but, you know, it's really easy to these days. What with everything that goes on... Yeah, I know, Mrs Mitchell. I'm the same. Right, well, you're welcome to wait here if you want. Thank you. Gov, have you got a minute? It's important. Well, a woman came in earlier to report her son missing. PC Casper's just got back from the medical centre where the boy's mother last saw him. Yeah, there's no witnesses. The CCTV coverage is pretty good, but there's something you need to see. OK? That's Greg Mitchell. His mum comes out looking for him in about 30 seconds. By that time, he's gone. Yeah. I thought I recognised the car. I was going to run a PNC check, but keep watching. There's no point. That's Rick Harris. Yeah. What the hell is he doing? I don't know what went on there, Gov, but it looks like he just abducted that kid. And it must be some kind of mistake. Rick wouldn't do something like this. The camera doesn't lie, James. Well, there has to be some sort of explanation. That's what we intend to find out. I thought you were going to stay with him. What happened? I tried to. I took him home, made sure he had something to eat. He said he wanted to be alone. What can I do? Sergeant Wright, thanks for coming in. I thought you'd want to be part of this, been Rick's FLO. Yeah, Nicky just told me that Rick Harris is a suspect in a possible abduction. Abduction? Is that what you're calling it? Well, at this stage, I don't know what else we can call it. Look. Well, you wouldn't take someone else's kid for no reason. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Well, to be fair, James, we don't know what he might do in this state. He's not answering his phone, is he? So clearly he's not in the mood to explain himself. Now, I've posted some officers outside Rick's house, but I think we can work on the assumption he's not going to take him there. Could you get his case notes sent over as soon as possible? There might be some clue as to where he's taking this kid. I'll get someone to back him over. OK. In the meantime, let's speak to Mrs Mitchell. You never know, Greg might be known to Rick, and this is just an innocent misunderstanding. Well, how's the boxing training going? Yeah, good, Mum. Working hard. The next round's coming up soon, isn't it? Yep. If the local paper were interested, how would you feel about becoming the poster boy for the championships? Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, go on. Yeah, it'd be really good PR for the station. Well, you think they'd be interested? Yeah, of course they will. I'll speak to Mia, get something set up, yeah? Keep up the training. All right. You right, Kitty Casper? Yes, Mum. Good. Moving stations will give us more time apart. Yeah, you wish. Uh, Carol, this is D.I. Manson. He's taken over the search for Greg. Hi, Carol. D.I.? I didn't want to cause such a fuss. Huh? That's fine. Shall we go in this room, eh? Excuse us. Sure. Just tell me what's going on. Do you recognise this man? No, I don't think so. Why should I? Who is he? His name's Rick Harris. He picked your son up from outside the medical centre 30 seconds after you last saw him. What do you mean, picked him up? Why would he do such a thing? That's what we're going to find out. Well, how do you know who he is? Well, I've known Mr Harris for several years. He's a good person. Been through a tough time recently. <laughs> Why has he taken my son? Carol, I want you to see some CCTV footage of Rick Harris, see if it jogs your memory. And then I'm going to tell you how we're going to find your son. OK? I hear you were called to Harvey Wallace this morning. Is everything all right? No, it's Rod, one of the Henderson kids. Kyle, giving him a lot of trouble. How many Hendersons are there? Far too many. I've just talked to his mum, actually, to ask her to bring Kyle into line. I'm not very hopeful. Well, if she doesn't, I'm sure that Rod will. He's done a really good job at that school, you know, dealing with the bully. We used to be there every five minutes. Excuse and... me. Rod? Vicky? You know, it's, it's, it's all right. I, I, I'll come straight down. All right. Trouble at the school. Rod's daughter, Vicky. Let go. This is Rick Harris. What's he doing? 
Richard Harris. It was in the paper. That was his son they found, wasn't it? Well, what does he want with Greg? We don't know. Well, Mrs. Mitchell, I don't believe he means Greg any harm. Oh, you know that for sure, do you? I've never seen this man before in my life. What is my son doing getting into his car? Our officers are doing everything they can to find them. We think Rick's just in shock. He never got his son back. Is that what this is about? We don't know. You keep saying that. I want Greg back. He's sick. He doesn't know how to look after himself properly. What do you mean he's sick? Greg's diabetic. That's why we were at the clinic. He'd been acting up about taking his insulin, so I, I made the doctor have a word with him. When was the last time Greg took his medication? Not since yesterday. He usually has it just before lunch. Mrs. Mitchell, has Greg got his insulin on him today? Yes, I always make sure he's got at least a shot with him wherever he goes. That is not the problem. The problem is that he hates taking it. And his blood sugar levels can go haywire. Hyperglycemic shock, he can, he can fall into a coma. Where's Vicky? She's inside. She turned up here in a real state. He, he just started screaming at her in the street, in front of all her friends. Oh, look at that. You tell me that's not Kyle Henderson's handiwork. He wasn't there this morning. Well, we can check the camera, but... Unfortunately, he's just nasty. He's not stupid. You know the camera wasn't covering the car. It's one thing to have a go at me, June, but I'm not having him terrorising Vicky. Oh, calm down. We'll sort it out. And this was on County High Street? I was with my mates. Hmm? Carl was on the other side of the road to start with, with his usual bunch of mates. He started mouthing off about Dad, about him being a bully. Then he crossed the road, said, Jessup should know what bullying feels like, and he started shoving me. He needs to be stopped. I haven't got the authority to do anything. Quite frankly, if I see him again, I'll probably want to wring his neck. I don't want to make it official, Dad. I'll never live it down. I just want to forget about it now. Well, I mean, I can have another word with him. Like you did two hours ago. That just made him worse, June. But what else am I supposed to he do? He broke in and entered the school. He carries a knife, and now he's victimising my daughter. How do you know he's got a knife? I took it off him earlier. Why? What do you know about a knife? Hmm? I've seen it. He pulled it on a boy at the school gates one day. And we can't do anything about this? Just as hang on. Right, you've got to tell me everything you know about this. He tried to copy Tim in maths. He hadn't done his homework, but Tim covered his paper up. So Carl pulled the knife on him after school and told Tim that if he didn't let him copy him next time, he'd be seeing that knife again. Can you get me Tim's details? I'll go and have a word. You can't go round there. Well, why not? Because they'll know I've told. Then things will get even worse for me. June, you can't. Vicky, we can't just leave it, OK? We've got to do something. You've got to tell me everything you know. Just because you live with us now doesn't mean you can tell me what to do, Dad. I'm not trying to tell her what to do. I'm trying to advise you as a police officer. I mean, what if Carl's true to his word? What if he does more than just flash the knife around next time? Come on, Vix. It's not easy for any of us. I'm not very comfortable turning over one of my pupils to the police. But we've got to do something. OK. Right. I'll get those details for you. But I still don't understand what you're looking for. How is any of this helping you find my son? The problem we have, Carol, is that we don't know where Rick might have taken Greg. You see, he's not answering his mobile phone. He's not at home. Well, the CCTV seemed to show that Greg didn't take much convincing to get into Rick's car. We're hoping this means that the two of them know each other somehow. And if that's the case, maybe there's something here that can give us a lead as to where they might have gone. He likes his football, doesn't he? Yeah, Greg loves it. He's always on at me to get a satellite TV. Loves to play, too. Well, loved. When he got diagnosed, I thought it best if he took some time out. It's one of the things he hates most about his illness. Is he any good? Yeah, he was. Candy Cougars. Well, Rick's been coaching football part-time for the last seven months or so. It was a part of his attempts to deal with Stevie's disappearance. This was the team. It was the Candy Cougars. When did Greg stop playing football? About five months ago. Yep, that's our link. Would anyone else know why he stopped playing? I mean, could Rick know that he had diabetes? I don't think so. 
Greg hates anyone knowing. Okay. We need to get a briefing together. Are you okay? Yeah. Vicky's just upset. That wasn't about you. Wasn't it? It's just, I just don't want my kids to be the deciding factor. But they are a factor, Rod. I, I've moved into their home. Maybe it's too soon for them if we get married now. I've been there for my kids as much as I could be. Not perfect by any respect, but I can honestly say I've tried my best. Yeah, I know that. It's not about that. Please, just listen to me. <laughs> I've also made sacrifices, but I wouldn't have had it any other way. I deserve to be happy too. You make me happy. That's it. That's why I asked you to marry me. So, when you answer me, I, I want it to be about what we want. It's not about my children or your colleagues or anyone else. OK. Oh, hey, Jessup. Why, oh, are you knocking off already, Grandad? <laughs> I told you not to come here, Carl. Now get home before I have to call your mother back in. I nearly lost school property there, weren't I? Can't stop me from being on the street, lady. Hang about my pals. No crime in that, is there? You've already been on school property. I saw what you did to my car. Can't make accusations like that in front of a police officer, mate. You must think we're stupid. You prove it. I haven't been near your geriatric wheels, have I? <laughs> <laughs> leave my daughter alone. You hear me, Henderson? You don't have a word, mate. She don't leave me alone. <laughs> know what I mean? Let me speak to this Tim. If he'll make a statement, we can get Carl for something far more serious. OK. Rick Harris. As I'm sure you're aware, the remains of his son were found yesterday after 18 months as a misper. He'd OD'd. Earlier today, Rick was seen enticing an 11-year-old boy, Greg Mitchell, into his car, and no one's heard from either of them since. Now, Greg is type 1 diabetic, so we need to find him as soon as possible. Well, we've got an all-units call out for Rick Harris's car. Good. Any questions? Are we treating this as an abduction, sir? Right now, we don't really know what Rick's motives are. We do know that he used to coach the boy in a football team five months ago, so there is a pre-existing relationship. However, please be aware that Rick is still grieving for his son, so he may not even know what he's doing right now. Uh, these are details of old haunts when they were trying to find Rick's son. He's trying to connect with happier times. Might be good places to look for him. Yeah, give priority to football grounds, parks with five-a-side pitches, that kind of thing. It's the only link we've got between the two of them. Now, Greg has got a history of not accepting the limits of his diabetes. So we need to find him before his condition catches up with him. Let's go. Sir? Is it true we picked Rick Harris up earlier this morning only to let him go again? It was my call. There was no evidence that he was driving under the influence. But plenty of evidence to suggest he wasn't in his normal state of mind. We're police officers, sir, not psychiatrists. Yes, I know that. I wasn't implying. I just wanted to know if you thought this guy was dangerous, that's all. If you'd asked me that this morning, I'd have said no. Ask me now. OK. I'll give Barton Street a shout, see if they'll lend us a couple of bodies to help with the search. Thank you, sir. James, mate. I'm in the middle of something now. I can't... I, I've just come from Rick's place. Neil, Stevie's stuff, he's destroyed it all. He's torn up all his photos. It's like he's snapped. What is he doing with this kid? Oh, what is it with that family? Why aren't they busy spending their money? Well, they'll be spending it on home tuition for Carl if they're not careful. I think Rod wants him chucked out of school. Anyway, I interviewed the classmate that he pulled a knife on, but he's refusing to admit that anything happened at all. Oh, intimidation starts early these days, isn't it? What about Vicky? Can't she give you a statement? Uh, well, actually, um, her and Rod are in reception now. I'm hoping that I might be able to twist her arm a bit. Now that is against police procedure. <laughs> Gina. He's asked me to marry him. Oh, congratulations. By the look on your face, you've not answered him yet. Still no harm in mulling over things. But then a leap of faith is just as good. Now, what do I know? I don't want to upset you, Vicky, but you really are the only one who can go on the record about him. It's hard enough at school. People always assume that I'll tell on them because of who Dad is. If she really doesn't want to. What about the car? Well, if it was Kyle... Of course it was him. Look, he knew that camera was there. He doesn't appear in view at any point between the time I nicked him and the time I got back here after the car incident. I'm applying to have him excluded. So you won't have to worry about him at school, Vicky. I know it's hard to stand up against somebody like him. Don't lecture me. You don't know what it's like. 
What was school like when you were there? All talk shops and skipping around the playground? Vicky, don't speak to June like that. We know how things have changed, but boys like Kyle need stopping before he gets worse. What he did to you, that's ABH, actual bodily harm, and he can be charged for that. You know, let him be scared for a change. I mean, do you think his mates are going to mess with you when they see that he's up on an assault charge? When they see that you're the kind of person who's prepared to stick their head above the parapet? Above the what? Well, what I mean is that you're the kind of person who's prepared to stand up and be counted. OK. I'll do it. So I was right? Yes. Ah, I can see how that got confusing at Barton Street. Oh, Gov, I've got something for you. Me and Dan checked out a local football field where Rick Harris used to take his son. Now, a guy that owns a burger van there recognised Rick from the photograph and said he was there with a young boy, just sat there eating. Well, did he notice anything about their behaviour? Was Greg distressed in any way? No, he didn't say there was anything wrong, just like father and son. What is this? About 90 minutes ago now, they drove off in Rick's car. Oh, could be anywhere by now. Yeah, but we need to be able to predict where they're going. We'll be chasing where they've already been. Well, we might be able to help out with that too. The burger guy reckoned that Rick was carrying a bag from an outdoor sports shop. Do we know what was in the bag? Dan's checking it out now. OK. Thanks, Sonny. Gov. What's he doing, taking him camping? Does Rick ever do anything like that with his son? Not that I can remember. Carol, Greg's been seen with Rick about 90 minutes ago. They were having lunch in a park. Well, is he all right? Well, where is he now? Apparently he's fine, yeah. Rick had some outdoor sports goods with him. Has Greg ever mentioned an interest in anything like that? Well, I, I, I don't Hello? know. I mean, he likes just about any kind of sport. Uh, Gov, PC Casper. James, why don't you take Carol down to the canteen? We'll come and find you in a bit. Sure. Go ahead, Dan. I found a sports shop and the owner recognises Rick. Said he remembers him because it's the first fishing rod he sold since Monday. Fishing rod? Yeah, that's what he said, Gov. We asked Mr Harris if he wanted anything else. Said he had the lot. Just needed a spare rod. OK. Hang on. OK. The nearest stretch of water there is this canal off St Faith Street. Let's get some people down there, see if anyone's gone fishing. St Faith Street, it's only five minutes from here. OK. Hang on. The Gemini. What's Gemini? It's a canal boat Rick used to take out with Stevie. Where's it moored? Bonham Wharf. Yeah, there's a little marina there. Did you get that, Dan? Yeah, I'm on my way. Let's get all units in the area down to Bonham Wharf ASAP. We need to find him before he gets on that boat. What we got, Dan? We're too late. Apparently, the bloke in the office reckons Rick Harris left on the Gemini about 45 minutes ago. Does he know which way they were heading? No, he didn't expect him to get on a boat, so he didn't keep an eye on things. Oh, shouldn't be too hard. It's either left or right. There's another thing. We've got a problem. Apparently, Rick Harris was alone. Wait! You can't take my son in for questioning without me being present. I know my rights. Yeah, all right, Mr. Henderson. You take all the time you need. Jessup's right to get him, didn't he, Mark? I told you to find a way to get me. This is bullying. My son's being bullied by a grown man, and you lot are letting him get away with oh, it. Oh, I've heard enough of this. Your son has been deliberately hanging around that school, taunting Mr. Jessup like a red rag to a bull. Sounds like Jessup deserves it. My son can't even get an education because of that man. He admitted this morning he's afraid to go to school because of him. Rick kind of got far, can he? What kind of radius are we talking about? Five miles in either direction if he sticks to the speed limit. Right, so it could be five miles, or he might have stopped 100 yards around the first bend. I want to search your perimeter of five miles east and west, working inwards. Yeah, but we don't even know if the boy's still with him. Well, he's the only one who knows where he is. Go off, we found Rick Harris's car parked just down the road. This was on the back seat. This is Greg's. Yeah, this was inside it. It's Greg's insulin kit. Let's move it. How can you blame Mr Jessup for Vickers assault? He wasn't there at the time, was he? Come on, Kyle. Tell him what you told me. Well, it's been really hard being new at Harvey Wallace and all. And it got around about our lottery win. I've been well picked on about it. Get us this, get us that. You can afford it. You're saying Mr Jessup said all this? No, not Jessup. But I reckon he knew about it. He didn't do nothing to stop it. I think he enjoyed watching me suffer. 
He's at a new school dealing with all this lottery business. It's not been easy for him. And no one up there gives him any sympathy. Well, it doesn't change the fact that he assaulted Vicky Jessup, does it, Mrs. Henderson? There weren't any assault. We got into a rat. She was telling me I deserve everything I get. I went to get past her, walk away. I clipped her by accident, totally by accident. Well, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to pass this on to our young offenders team and they can make a decision as they see fit. You what? He needs a bit of looking after. Me and his dad have been separated. He's finding it hard. Give him a second chance. He says he saw him. When? D.I. Manson from 158. Yeah, go ahead. I just spoke to the fisherman. He said he saw Jim and I passing west about 20 minutes ago. Was you sure about the name? Yep, reckons his line got snagged just as he was about to land his lunch. We might be able to head him off here, but as for getting him to stop... No, we'll go here. If he wants to stop, the canal can stop him. Anyone worked a lock before? You lot have got a nerve. It's not about the behaviour, it's who you help and who you won't. I can assure you that's not true, Mrs Henderson. It is. What have the police ever done for us? I'm guessing that you're referring to occasions when you might not have been on the right side of the law, Kyle. That's crap. What about now? We're victims in our own neighbourhood. Hate mail, threats, paint on the garage door. If you really want something to investigate, why don't you look into that? I'll have you reported it. I'm reporting it now. OK, let's sit down and take a statement, then. So you can tear it up where we go. I know what you think about us, what our neighbours think about us. Like I said, you think we care? We don't give a monkeys, do we? I don't give a toss. Gov. Rick. Where's Greg? Where's the boy? Rick. Where is he? Stay back! What's going on with you? I just needed to get away, get some space, please. Please, stay back! OK, OK. We only want to help you, OK? We only want to help you. I don't want your help! Back up! OK, OK, calm down, OK. It's all right. What are we going to do with him? I've never seen him like this before. I'm going to see if I can talk to him. Try and get on the boat without him noticing, OK? Be careful, though. No unnecessary risks. I don't want him harming himself. Just want to talk to you, OK? I only want to talk to you. Where's Greg? Where's the boy? You picked him up this morning outside the medical centre. Where is he now? I just wanted to help him. He was alone, upset. OK. Why isn't he on the boat with you, Rick? I just thought I could help him. Keep him safe. I tried. But there was nothing I could do for him. Why is he talking about him in the past tense? You need to tell us where he is, Rick. You have to let us help him. What, the way you helped Stephen, the way you helped my boy? This has nothing to do with Stevie. You were supposed to keep him safe! You're supposed to protect him! When those drug dealers were filled and full of poison, why did you help him? Why did you abandon my son? Hey, hey, hey! The only person who Jim, abandoned Jim, him back was Jim. you! That's not true. How can you do this? That boy's mother is in pieces! She's blaming herself for him going off! We both know how that feels, don't we? Huh? Now, the only person to blame around here is you. If we don't get to that boy soon, he might die. Now, Stevie's death wasn't your fault, OK, Rick? But if Greg dies, it's down to you! What? You, you think I'd hurt you him? You already have! James. Ah! Ah! Where is he? James. James. Where is James. he? James! He's safe! Ah! I took him somewhere safe! Where? Rick? Where? So he's going to be okay. Doctor says he just needs some rest. And 
to lay off the burgers and ice cream in future. Oh. <laughs> if that man hadn't brought him in, though, I... Well, part of Rick still knew he had to do the right thing. What's going to happen to him? I woke up at 2 a.m. this morning wanting to die. It's no big thing. I just knew that was what I wanted. It was kind of a relief. Put out a bottle of 12-year-old scotch to finish. I wasn't in any hurry. So I took the bottle down to the park to watch the sun come up. I saw the families turn up, play on the swings. And that was kind of nice for a while. But then watching them made me angry. I couldn't work it out. It all seemed so complacent. Then your cop has arrived, and you know the rest. James went round to your house. He saw that you had destroyed all of Stevie's things. I didn't feel I had a right to them anymore. I've probably never really had a right to keep them. Anyway, I thought I'd have a little bonfire. So I went out to buy some lighter fluid. Which is when you saw Greg. I was his football coach for a while. I wonder why I dropped it. Said his mum made him do it. Anyway, he seemed upset. And uh, I don't know why. I just... I just wanted to cheer him up. So I suggested that we go and kick a footy about. And he seemed keen. It never occurred to me that his mum would be looking for him till later. But we were having such a good time. I didn't want it to end. He wanted... Burgers and ice cream. He had tons of the stuff. I had no idea he was diabetic. Part of me started thinking I'd been given a second chance. He liked being with me. I took care of him. But then he started feeling sick. Drowsy. I couldn't keep him away. I started to panic. I didn't know what to do. Well, you did the right thing taking him to hospital, Rick. You weren't to know he was diabetic. I bought him a fishing rod. I thought we could spend the day on the boat the way me and Stevie used to. Before... Turns out there's no second chances, detective. Only repeated mistakes. Oh, June? Yeah? Any luck with Vicky? Yes. She made a statement. So, we bailed Carl Henderson pending investigation. I'm going to go and tell Rob now. Oh, are you going to tell him anything else he might want to hear? Uh, maybe. I'll keep you posted. I mean, I saw the car disappearing around the corner. I, I, was, I was so focused on the people in the road, I didn't even get a partial registration. I mean, all I know is it was a sort of metallic yellow colour. All oh, right. And how's Rod doing? Where is he? Vicky. Just, just sit yourself down, all right? Um, your dad's in surgery. He's got head and leg injuries. He's going to be in there some time, so all we can do is sit and wait. Why did this happen? Just outside the school. But how? That's right. We're dealing with the accident. You let me worry about that. You just worry about your dad, yeah? June, is there anything I do for you? Um, there's nothing much I can do here. I thought I might nip home, maybe get Rod's wash bag and some books for me. Do you want me to drive you? No, I'd rather just go. Um, Auntie Jean's coming around to sit with you. Could you stay with Vicky till then? 
Yeah, of course. Come back as soon as you can, though, OK? I want you here. Yeah, be as quick as I can. And, Mom, have you seen Mr Jessup? How is he? Well, he's still in surgery, but he's got some pretty serious injuries. Any witnesses? Well, two, but they only remember a yellow metallic card. No reg, no description of the driver. Oh, Sergeant Ackland taking it. Any luck locating the vehicle on CCTV? You know, we're still looking. Traffic is still at the scene. They're going to call us when they finish with any findings. Well, let me know if they get anything. Mum. Oh, Peter Casper. I hear you handled yourself very well today. Mum. And it's occurred to me that you've done your time. I assume you're keeping off the steroids. I never touch them again, Mum. I should hope not. And I didn't take your name off the list. What do you mean? The boxing championship, PZ Casper. I did not take your name off the list. You cleaned yourself up, you proved yourself. Now, if I were you, I'd get back into training, so you're ready, yeah? Thanks, Mum. There's a fire at 32 Maybury Drive. Called in by the resident, Michelle Henderson. Paramedics already dispatched to the scene. Uh, Sierra Oscar from 48, you can show me dealing. Downstairs, and something had been put through the front door. The carpet was on fire. I told you they were out to get us, but you wouldn't do anything about it, would you? Mrs. Henderson, I, I took you seriously. I, I told you to make a statement. Did you see anybody? They're cowards. They don't hang around. They hate us, because we've got a little bit more than they have. Kyle. It's all right, Kyle. You're going to be all right. So what's going to happen to him now? That's up to the CPS to decide. Listen, I'm, I'm so sorry about today. I just lost it. I, um, I just got so angry. So did Rick. Look where that got him. Yeah, I've uh, been thinking about it. I don't want to end up like that, Neil. Rick was always telling us never to give up hope, and it destroyed him. Deep down, he probably knew that Stevie was dead. And I do too. What do you mean? Amy is most likely dead. We both know that now. So it's time to move on. Not to forget her, but uh, find some kind of peace. Get some closure. I was thinking about a celebration, you know, in honor of her um, being part of my life. I was wondering if you might like to help. Yeah, of course. Thanks. Vicky, I'm so sorry. It took me longer than I thought. Is there any news? I think the surgery went well, but we just have to wait and see until we wake up. Well, to open his eyes. Me too. He will, won't he? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, how to you earlier? I didn't mean it. I know how much Dad wanted to do this, OK? None of that matters, does it? No. We just need to focus on your dad getting better. He'll be all right, won't he? Yeah.
next time on The Bill. It's exactly the same MO as the fires in the B&B and the foster home. Same point of origin and white spirit was the accelerant use. The CPS clearly felt there was enough to take this case forward, so I don't know why you're busting my chops about it. There's an arsonist on the loose in Sunhill, so let's catch him before somebody dies. A gambler loses his life in Taggart next. And a lot to do in the new year. Get your ex back, make up with your mother. Oh, and uh, save the world from the undead. If you've ever felt like you were surrounded by zombies, join forces with Simon Pegg for Shaun of the Dead on ITV2 now.